Hey everybody, you're watching Michigan Farmer 421. I'm Clyde, and today we are going to assemble the Dura Heat Kerosene Forced Air Heater 135 BTU. And uh, let's get into it. Okay, so I got this unit at the local family farm at home. We're going to put this thing together. Uh, it's the, uh, I said the Dura Heat 135. It's got a 10 gallon tank or 10 hour run time. It's going to be probably real simple, nice wheels, uh, flat free, so those are important. Actually, this thing is surprisingly small. So it seemed to occur to me that all the heaters, oh, this has a chain on it, so it's not, never mind. All the heaters were going to the same cap design, which kind of made me believe they were all coming out of the same place. I still believe they are, because like this whole thing is the same besides this red light compared to the master uh, heater, the yellow one, the uh, 135. Um, yeah, so we kind of want, I kind of wanted to try something different, um, and it's white, so it matches my trucks. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna get this thing set and. Now we can put it together on the cardboard box. I don't see why not. Of course, I'm going to do the peel because I can. I see. All right, and I think that's the only peel on this. Oh, there's. One on the summer side, but I can't grab it right now. There's one on the summer side. Okay, all right. So we're gonna just grab this. Not that heavy when empty. Get the box out of the way and set this down. Got a nice piece of cardboard to lay on. Cap seals pretty good. All right. First off, we're going to disassemble. I've installed many of these, like put a lot of these together, so who needs instructions? I don't, do you? Read the instructions if you don't, if you haven't done this before. Let me just tell you that. Alright, so we need our axle for our wheels because uh, we don't have it, that's kind of pointless. All right, got our axle in, and now get our parts bag. There are spacers and nuts. You put the spacers on the axle first, spacer, spacer, and then you put the wheel on. It only goes on one way. I mean, you can put it on both ways, but the prettier side out, of course. Just put this on here. Just stick that through. Just put this cap nut on, so you only can it on so far. And we'll just hand tighten it for now, and then I'll come back with the wrench once it shows back up to the shop. I believe it is out in the shed right now. All right, we got one wheel on. Same thing, make sure your wheel spacer is on. Slide the tire on, slide the nut on, or spin the nut on outside. All right, so now we're going to pull this off, flip our cart down, and then set our heater inside of it. Line up holes. There's one, two, three, four. Wow, this thing got dent up. That's kind of discouraging. Hopefully yours doesn't come with this big dent in the side. You probably can't see it, but I can, and it annoys me. But I already tore up the box, and there's nothing wrong physically with the heater, so even though I did pay an arm and a leg for it, we're okay. Okay, but before we put our bolts through, we gotta get our great carry handles on. Or not carry handles. Pull handles. That's not what they're called either. Let's see here. Okay. Right there. 
remember how these go together. Because for some reason every heater has to have a different carry handle setup. So like they might go together like this. Might not. I'm pretty sure one goes like this. One goes like this. In fact, I think that's how it works. Perfect. Alright. So now we take our long bolts here. Two three inch long ones. There are a couple different sizes, but these I believe are the correct ones. But they have to go through both pipes. So you gotta kind of jimmy it through. There we go, there's one. There's two. I'm gonna have to get a nut. No, there are two separate bags using the same nuts that are in the screws for this one. Alright, and we're going to just put one there. Put one there. Okay, I'm going to do two screws on the other side. Over here. Hopefully it all lines up. There we go. So we got our front handle bolts in. Let's roll this thing forward. This thing is really light. Tells you how good of quality metal from China is. I guess it's depending on what store you go to. It's supposed to have the core wraps here and here. Um, I have the screws for them, but I don't have the cord wrap brackets. I also don't have the front protection flange. So I don't know if this is just, if this is the American model or Canadian model has the cord wrap. I don't know what's going on there. Because reading in the manual, this model is not supposed to have the cord wraps. But then, or the cord wrap, you know, the cord thingies. Anyway. But in the book, in the assembly, it has cord wraps on it. So maybe it's for the 180. Because, well, this book's... For the 50, 135, the 80, I don't know why they call it a, a T. Oh, that's probably the propane. The 180 and the 220, which we have a 215, and that is a rocket of a heater. If you have a big shop and you want to heat it up quick, use one of them. I think it's like twice the length of this thing, so it comes out to here. Anyway, so this thing does have a couple of air codes. E1, which would be, I believe... This is all in a foreign language. Oh, here we go. English is up here. E1 would be photo fuel tank empty. E2 would be room temperature sensor. So that would be a sensor failure. And then E3 is a thermostatic switch failure. So if that thing goes off, oh, you're paying for some money. But the photo cell sensor is like up in, I don't know, it's in the back. Now on these, I believe. Yeah, so it's like right on top of the burner. Right here, but yeah. So I'm gonna tie these all down with a screwdriver, but that's pretty much how you put one of these together. So that's how you install or put together a uh, dual heat kerosene Air Force heater 135 BTU. Um, I'm pretty sure the 180 and the 220 are all put together the same. Um, but yeah, so that's it for uh, this tutorial or instructions on how to do this. So please like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.